We're Dave and Karen from Watts on Wheels and have been full-timing since December of 2017. We have a Volvo heavy-duty truck of Leroy with our two Spider motorcycles, our DRV Mobile Suites, Dixie, and our smart car, Zippy. Hey Dave, you got a couple of boxes that say blue dot on the side. What do no, you got? No, they don't. They say Christmas. Oh. <laughs> what do you got going on? I have my blue dot system for the RV. Those are the flat hand hoses. And a blue dot system is a braking system. Air over hydraulic. And there's the master cylinder with the air cylinder and the hydraulic cylinder. That's all that came in that box. Uh-huh. And then, here's all the other toys. Another big Christmas box that says Christmas. <laughs> Paper. Aww. See all the parts and pieces and valves and airlines that you need to install the blue dot system. And that is a big air tank. That's what's filling that whole box. Yeah, just the air tank. There's all the valves and what have you. And you're installing this yourself, huh? Gonna give it a shot. You ever done it before? No. A lot of things I haven't done before. <laughs> <laughs> and why are you doing this? Got nothing else to do. Okay. Because the electric brakes in the trailer just don't seem to work well enough. What do you work. mean you don't feel like they stop? Well, they come on too late because it takes time for them to spool up and, and all that. And they just don't apply enough pressure or they Stop crinkling. They can't apply enough pressure. So, the blue dot system is much more reliable. There's no connections to go bad. Well, there are connections, but not as many electrical connections. There's none electrical connections. So how does it work? By air pressure from the truck, from the rig. It's air brakes. So you have to have a big rig to do this? Yeah. Oh, okay. You can't do this on like a dually or something not unless you have air brakes put into it oh okay but so currently your brakes are electric on the on the rv on the rv yeah and you want them to be air yep i want them to be air over hydraulic right now they're just electric over hydraulic because when i step on the pedal in the truck i know i'm getting air out so it'll it works better in tandem too is it like a safety thing that you're doing it? Yeah. Safety. Okay. For safety. For okay. your safety. Oh. Not mine. Oh. 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 What would this bad boy cost you? Uh, it was like 530 bucks. How long do you think it's going to take to put it in? Forever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've never done one. Okay. I, I, it, it, how do you know how to do it? It's got a pretty picture. I saw the pretty picture somewhere. Ugh. It's all you need to know. Uh huh. You skip past all this reading stuff. And you go to the pretty pictures? Right there. Pretty picture. Oh, boy. That's how it goes. Hi, Dave. Hi. So, you've been working on the blue dot system. What have you done so far? Well, I made this plate. It goes over those holes, and that's where the hoses hook up. For the air. The glad hand hoses. What is, why are there a blue and a red? Because one's supply and one's control. Oh. This is the actual brake line when you step on the pedal, and this is the emergency. Okay, and so this is the front where the generator used to be. You added batteries, and it looks like you added a shelf in here. I riveted some brackets on there. Uh huh. And as you can tell, I rivet them from the inside of the coach out, so it's nice and flush in there. There's nothing sticking out on the inside for 
putting stuff in there it won't get hung up on anything. Okay. Those are the rivets for the right. shelf. Okay, so you want to make sure they stay flat so you did it from the nice side. And flush so you're not hooking up anything, you know, uh -huh. dragging on anything when you load it up. Is this part of the stuff what? over here? Just those two black hoses going through the wall. Oh, okay. That's from all oh, up front there. Yeah. The other stuff's all the inverter. Hmm, okay. And then around the corner, I've put the valve bodies, the valve works in. Uh huh. So far. Okay. And I'm letting. Spray. Yeah, is that coming from from here? Yep. Oh, okay. So it's going through there. What does that valve do? The one valve on the back upper controls the brakes. Uh huh. When you step on the pedal and actuate, it make the brake actuator happen. And this one controls the pressure for the tank, which has to be. 90 pounds so for the you, Kodiak disc brakes. Probably different for other brakes? Yeah, if I had uh, drum brakes, I wouldn't need that valve right there. Oh. You still got another hose to put on there? Yep. Well, that's the shelf that's going inside. He just painted it black, so it's waiting for it to dry. Just made out of plywood. There's the air tank that's going to be sitting on that shelf. So what's your next step? Well, I'm going to take the air tank and put it on the shelf and center it up and bolt the air tank to the shelf so I can get the holes right. And I'll take the air tank off and put the shelf back in there and bolt that down then put the air tank in there again and bolt it down. Mm -hmm. Then hook up the lines and that ought to be about it for in here. Then what happens after that? I have to put the brake actuator in or the master cylinder. Where does that go? That goes inside the coach behind the gray doors. Okay, down in the basement area. Yeah. And then how do you run lines to the brakes? I just one run one one of those like black airline back to the actuator. Where's the actuator live? Behind the gray doors. Oh. The master cylinder. Oh. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It's all basket. <laughs> well, I've got it. I've got it over here. If you'd oh yeah. Like to look at it. Okay. And that's gonna. You have space for that behind the gray doors. The gray doors. I better. <laughs> are you talking about right? Are you talking about right here? Yeah. You slide this. Okay, where's it gonna sit? Right here. It's gonna replace this thing. Got enough room in there? I'll make room. Wow. We don't use this anymore. This, what, is, what is that? That's the old inverter for the uh, refrigerator. Oh. And we don't use that anymore. We have the big inverter. Uh huh. So between this and this, I should be able to get it in right there. So I noticed the hole in the bottom of your shelf. What's that for? That's for this drain tank, a drain valve, to drain the moisture out of the tank, because the tank's going to sit like this. Uh-huh. And so you can get your hand up in there to undo that valve. Okay. And is this how you're going to... That's how I'm going to. Got some cheesy brackets I made. You made those? Oh, yeah. Didn't come with, it only came with these, huh? Yeah. You made these? Yeah. You had to do weld them and everything? Yeah. Oh, jeez. I think they would come with something. Yeah, something. Hey, Dave, what you going to be explaining to us? The installation of a blue dot braking system. Okay. Which is air over hydraulics. So you used to have hydraulics? I used to have electric over hydraulics. Okay. And what kind of brakes do you have? I have Kodiak 8,000 pound axle disc brakes. Okay. Am I going to follow you here? Yeah, you go follow me. This is where I put it all. I used to have a generator in here, and I took the generator out and put a inverter battery bank in. Mm -hmm. And uh, up here is what you see is the blue dot system right here. 
and I put this little shelf in to set the air tank, to bolt the air tank to it. I see you bolted it on both ends, huh? Right. Okay. And then uh, I also bored two holes through the front of the coach here so I could run my glad hand airlines into the coach. And uh, I ran those in and they come out right here and here. They just, on the other side of this wall, just come up and come out. And then I put them into the valve. Let me come. And then I installed the, the valve up here, for, but I got that bolted to the top of here. What, what did you have to buy separately? I had to buy this valve separately. Oh, that valve. Okay, the other one came with it. The other one comes with the kit. Okay, gotcha. This valve drops the air pressure down to 90 pounds or so for the Kodiak disc brakes. If you have drum brakes, you don't need this valve. Oh, okay. So I put that in. The air comes in here. Fills the tank. That tank is for the breakaway emergency brakes. So if one of these lines ever breaks or the trailer comes detached from the tow vehicle and snaps one of these lines, the brakes automatically come on. Okay, so you don't have that little wire attached to the hitch anymore. No, I don't. Okay. No. And then it goes through this valve, which is your braking valve. Well, that is, but it powers this valve. And then this line here is what actually goes back to the, uh, the brake canister. And uh, it's hooked to the master cylinder, which pushes the hydraulic fluid into the calipers on the brakes. So you're telling me that tank is strictly for emergency? More or less, yep. And otherwise it's getting air? From the truck. From the, the truck. When the brakes are applied, the air comes down this blue line. Okay. Right here. Uh-huh. And this charges the tank, the red line. Uh-huh. For emergencies. Oh. So if either one of those breaks off, then that tank will take over. That apply tank. Air, air automatically to stop your RV from rolling away. Yep. Okay. And then the other half of it. Which is in here. Was that difficult putting all that together? Together? Huh. No? Incredibly easy. How long did the whole thing take you? It took me two days just because of the location I had to drive out there. And of course, when you drive out there, you don't have all your tools. Uh -huh. So I ran an airline from the valve up there and the brake, the, uh, the tank. And here it is, comes all the way back into the basement area here, or behind the gray doors. And here sits the brake can, right here, the air can for the brakes. And all that is is a big diaphragm with a steel rod in it, more or less. You step on the brakes, it drives the steel rod into the master cylinder, which is right there, and applies the brakes. Pushes the uh, brake fluid in and applies the brakes. So you just uh, clamp that down there. Did you take something out of there? There, there was an electric uh, brake system in here. I took that out. So you just took the brake lines that went to that and attached it to this one? Right. Okay. So that's it. That was it, huh? That's how it works. So what are glad hands? Glad hands are the air hookups for the, the braking system. So on only the, big rigs are going to have this. You're yeah. not doing this on a regular pickup truck or a dealer. You have to have air brakes to start. Okay. So like a big truck like ours. Yeah. And why would you go through all this to swap all that out for Blue, Blue Dot system? It's more responsive. When you step on a brake pedal, boom, the brakes are on. And it's more limited. I mean, it's metered out better. For when you're stepping on the brakes, there's more, the harder you push, the more braking power you have in the, in the coach. And there's less chance of failure. With the uh, electric over hydraulics, you got all sorts of electrical connections and stuff. And we've had nothing but problems with them. So, so. This, does this um, keep you from having to use a jackalope for your yep. brakes? No jackalope, no nothing anymore. So Dave, what did this cost you? 
all together are about 650 bucks, 700 bucks, somewhere in there. Can you feel the difference driving with the blue dot versus oh, your old system? Big time. What's the difference in the feel? You don't have the surge. When you hit the brakes, you don't have that momentary delay where you have all the weight of the, the coach coming behind you before the brakes come on. The minute you hit your brakes, those brakes are on, so you stop evenly. So the pressure to those brakes are equal to the pressure of your foot on the brake pedal. Exactly. And it wasn't like that before? No. Uh -huh. There was always a little time delay. Okay. You don't have that little bump behind you. So, Dave, you think you can put this blue dot in yourself? Well, I said, self. And I recognized my voice, and then I looked down, and I noticed I was wearing my underwear. And I thought, yeah, I think I can do this. Good. Good. <laughs>